All right, so we're here in Massachusetts campground. At least this section is underwater. Uh, there is a drain out there, um, which uh, we noticed again when the water receded yesterday and this morning. Um, but I thought they would have come and cleared the drain, but they did not. And now everything's backed up again. We're kind of on the bottom slope of a hill that's on this uh, Cape Cod Canal. And uh, so that water is running down into this little valley right here because there's another hill that goes up there to the road. So all that water right here has nowhere to go and it's just sitting. And unfortunately for some folks, there are a handful of folks that are staying that way um, and they are in tents at the bottom of the hill, right in the middle. And uh, yesterday they were underwater and it looked like they got everything dried out today. Um, and then this happened. And so I just can't imagine man being swamped like that. It's gotta be a mini nightmare um, grabbing all your shit and uh, trying to get to high ground or at least putting it in your car. But yeah, so that's where we are right now. Aren't you glad we have an RV slash ARC? <laughs> Absolutely. For such an event? Trying to get closer to the internet. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to send my dad a video. And Through osmosis? Yes. I figure if I'm closer <laughs> to the... I know. The router. <laughs> I will say this. The uh, the internet has not been like the greatest in this park or this area. No. Um, but um, we've actually been in areas where our router so we use two mobile home internet and we travel with it and we've actually had really great success our entire trip so far of all the places we've been and we've been in some pretty remote rural areas yeah. and i mean van's been able to stream we've been able to upload videos to youtube um faster than some other places um but here for whatever reason um it's just uh doo-doo we're just kind of hanging out watching it rain and um Making some spaghetti sauce and a little turkey bolognese for dinner tonight. Sir, this is a no wake zone. Oh. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully the weather slacks up tomorrow and the next day because we really would like to drive out to the Cape um, and uh, you know get out on the beach and kind of experience you know Cape Cod. Otherwise, I guess we'll start collecting animals two by two. finally getting a chance to drive out to the beach, which I'm very excited about. Um, it's one of the things I really wanted to do. We're gonna drive out to Chatham. Christopher, how are you today? I'm great, digging the weather. It's nice to be walking around in a cotton shirt and not feel like you're just drenched. In August, no less. But yeah, I think we're gonna make our way down to the beach, probably find us a bite to eat. I don't know, lobster roll, a cup of clown chowder. Sounds good to me. I know, right? So yeah, we've been enjoying our first week here in Massachusetts. Uh, tomorrow we make the drive a little further north, about an hour west of Boston. Um, what is it, uh, Littleton? Gonna be there for I think a week before we uh, drive up into uh, Maine. We'll be going to uh, Booth Bay for uh, at least three or four days before we head up towards Acadia National Park. Not very. It's just a rock. It's just a rock. <laughs> it's just a rock. <laughs> yep. So today I'm going to work on a chocolate cranberry icebox cake. Massachusetts has lots of cranberry bogs, plus if you're needing to take a dessert over the holidays, this could be an option for you. 
It's a pretty simple recipe. I plan on making it a little bit more difficult by making my own chocolate wafer cookies, but you can always get those store-bought and save yourself a step. So I'm gonna add in half a cup of sugar and a half a cup of water and two cups of cranberry. And the recipe calls for vanilla extract, but as you guys have noticed, I have vanilla beans and I like that flavor better. So I'm gonna put those in there and allow them to simmer in and release that flavor in with the cranberries. We're gonna cook this on high until it comes to a boil, then I'm gonna simmer it for about 10 minutes. I want all of my cranberries to pop and release their juices and then we'll you know, simmer that down and bring it to, once I pull it off, I'm gonna cool it to room temperature and then we'll start, while that's happening, I'm gonna work on my chocolate wafer cookies. And then we will pull it all together into our beautiful icebox cake. All of the recipes will be in our blog spot, so you can check that out for yourself if it's something you're interested in trying. All right, so we've got our icebox cake. It's a chocolate and cranberry icebox cake to showcase Massachusetts. Let's get in there. So we're out here this morning with a Smoke Show barbecue out of Groton, Massachusetts. Chef Chris, what's going on, Chef? How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, man. How are you? I can't complain. We got a beautiful day here in, uh, are we in September now? Yeah, September 1st. Feels, feels like we're still in August, but it's it's not raining. The sun's out. I'm not buried in the kitchen. Couldn't no think of a better place to be. No snow yet? No snow. No snow yet. It's probably next week. <laughs> Being New England and all. Right? So you guys got a little uh, mobile catering? Yeah, so you know, out of COVID, we decided uh, when COVID hit the restaurants, we have two brick and mortar restaurants and we figured um, we didn't know what was gonna happen. So we sort of launched this to be able to take the party to people's houses when everyone was partying outside and, and couldn't go into the restaurants. Honk if you agree, that person agrees. They're a big um, fan. So yeah, so we did this and it actually, it's ended up taking off and, and becoming uh, extremely busy. We, we, we do mostly local stuff, we do travel a little bit. But uh, again, we do everything uh, with the, the smoker from Meadow Creek, um, custom-built smoker. We just put about 200 pounds of brisket to it uh, last night into this morning. Nice. Um, we got a grill, so we can do chickens on it, and we can also use it as a grill for like burgers. And then we have a portable fryer to do our buttermilk chicken. Oh yeah, that's what we're working on right now, slow and steady. It smells great. Yeah, there. That's half the battle, right? Absolutely. Does, does this make you want to cook again? I always want to cook. <laughs> For the people? Yes. <laughs> yes. Huge thank you to everybody who's been checking us out. We do appreciate it. But if this is your first time seeing our episodes, we would love to hear from you. Let us know what you think. Give us a like, subscribe, maybe even tell a friend.
Get your sticking paws off me! proper authorization. So for the remainder of the experience, those instant portrait devices will have to go away. Thank you very much, friends. Right this way! This is the big beer Double IPA. Double IPA. Look at you. With mosaic and cryo. Pop. I guess the, the IPA training wheels are officially off after Treehouse is here. Oh my gosh, forever. I oh am. yeah. I'm on a unicycle now. So we're at Trillium Brewing, downtown Boston, and you're on the unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Cannoli in your life? Uh-uh. Leave the gut. Take the cannoli. Look at that. Holy cannoli. Hey. Minty? Mm-hmm. It's almost like ice cream. Oh yeah. You good? Mm, why did I wait so long? For this moment. <laughs> so I can share it with you. Good? You're a little bit in your beard, or your, your mustache. He's saving that for later. <laughs> saving that guy for later. <laughs> Alright, so, ever. end of our day here in Boston. We're about to head back to uh, North Station. Grab the rail uh, back to uh, where we're staying. Uh, short day. Not, you know, a whole lot of time to run around, but we got the pups out. They're waiting on us. Um, but, fun day. End of the day with a sweet little treat. We got some cannolis at Mike's Pastry. Mm-hmm. What'd you guys think of the day? Five stars. That's pretty good. Uh, tomorrow, 
driving to Salem. Yeah. We're gonna go to Salem. Gonna go to Salem. And then possibly if we can squeeze it all in in one day, I think if we get up early enough and do it, I think we can go to Salem in the morning and then our way on our way back to the campsite, we'll do Concord and Lexington. I saved you my bike. No, give me that bike. <laughs> give me that bike. Nope. Let me lick your fingers. No. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, All right, got back to the campground, relaxed. Let's make some unique and clam chowder. We're gonna do the bacon down. You wanna render it down until it gets nice and crispy. Pull the bacon out, reserve your bacon grease, add in butter, add in the flour. Let's make brew. Stir it around until it gets nice and bubbly, golden brown. Add in your onions, add in celery. Stir the onions and celery into the roux, let it cook. Season a little bit, add in chopped clams. Add in some clam juice, a little more clam juice, stir that in. Add in your potatoes. Crispy bacon is next. Let's pour in half and half in the milk. Stir that in, add a little bit of bay leaf, and let that reduce down until it gets nice and bubbly and then season the taste. Salt and fresh ground black pepper. And I think we are ready to eat. All right, so clam chowder is done. Super easy. Bacon, onions, potatoes, celery, clams, clam juice, a little bit of roux, which is fat, usually butter, and flour, and then obviously a little bit of, uh, I use 2% milk, and then a touch of a uh, half and half. So, we're all done, we'll scoop this up. Uh, we're gonna use regular saltine crackers on top because they didn't have any uh, oyster crackers at the store. But hey, being from the South, saltine crackers is a perfectly acceptable replacement that you can smush up and crumble over the top for that little uh, extra texture that you're looking for, so. All right, Van, you're up first, right? Crispy bacon, clams, red, red potatoes. How's that look? Baby, you want some? I think what would really be really good on top of here too is just to kick it off is like some like crispy fried like clam bellies. I think that would just like set it off. Let's dig in. Man, what's the consensus so far? It's good. It's good. Excuse me? Yes. It's great. <laughs> Better than any clam chowder you've ever had before? Yeah. My name is Ranger Jared. I'd like to welcome you here to Minuteman National Historical Park. So today we are in Concord. We are going to Salem, I'm pretty sure. We might stop in Lexington. But yeah, we're in here in Concord where the battle first started, the American Revolution. So we're walking around looking at stuff. Uh, 
with witchcraft. How do you plead? I plead the fifth. We don't know what that is yet. <laughs> Okay, do you feel bad about what you did? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll never leave you with the dogs again. <laughs> All right, so we're on our way home from a really cool day today. We started out by visiting the battlefields in Lexington and Concord, uh, the historic shot heard around the world. It was just really neat to follow up the information that we learned over at the museum for the Boston Tea Party, which was also great. Um, but just yeah, to see the actual like battlefields and there's like grave monuments and just a lot of really cool stuff. We got to see, we saw the bridge that was um, where the first fighting had, was initiated. So that was neat. And then after that, we went into Salem and that was really fun. We got to see some witchy stuff and went and saw the witch's dungeon museum. They have replica cells that the ladies were housed in and a really cool uh, mock-up of the trials that took place. So if you're in Salem, I would definitely recommend checking that out. It's really neat to see.